Muy buenos días, amados hermanos y amigos presentes. Es realmente una bendición y privilegio grande. Good morning, beloved brethren and friends present. It is truly a great blessing and privilege that the Lord grants me to be here in Calle Puerto Rico and to share some moments of fellowship with you around the Word of God in this third pool. In our age, the age of the cornerstone, and in our dispensation, the dispensation of the kingdom. Greetings to the missionary Miguel Bermudez Marín, there in Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico, and to the pastor, the Reverend Epifanio López Rangel, and to all the brethren there. May God bless you greatly and keep you and guide you every moment in the steps that you will carry out today for which later I will be sending a few words from here in the afternoon for the brethren there in Monterrey and to all those who are connected in the different countries and are seeing this broadcast through the satellite Amazonas and the satellite Utilsat 8 and other means of communication and those present here. For those who are here for the first time also and are visiting us, may God bless you greatly. And for the people who have come for the first time, may you leave this place filled with the blessings of the Lord and each one of us as well. On this occasion, we have a very important subject which Dr. William Soto Santiago unfolded and preached to us who brought his message and fulfilled the purpose for which God has sent him. And the message was recorded on tapes and it was written for the blessing of the entire church bride at the same time. And this message He preached it on Saturday, December 2nd, 2006, here in Puerto Rico. And the subject is The Mystery of the Seventh Seal and the Seventh Trumpet. For which, let us read in the Gospel according to Mark, in chapter 13, Verse 26 to 27, where he tells us, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He writes there, Revelation 10, 1 to 11. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. And he writes there, Matthew 24, 30-31, and also writes Malachi 4-2, Isaiah 61-2, Revelation 10, 1-11, he wrote that again, and 19, 11-19. the seventh seal and the seventh trumpet. That is, the mystery of the seventh seal and the seventh trumpet. You may please be seated. He tells us in the message the marriage with the Son of Man which was a message preached by Dr. William Soto Santiago on January 18th, 1998. Here in Puerto Rico, he tells us. And now, this trumpet of Revelation chapter 11, verse 15 and on, he says, And the seventh angel sounded, 
And there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. He tells us in the book of quotations, which is a book of excerpts of messages preached by the Reverend William Marion Branham, forerunner of the second coming of the Lord, anointed with the spirit of Elijah in his fourth manifestation from North America, who also left us his message that would foreshadow the coming of the Lord. Just as John the Baptist was sent before the Lord to prepare the way for the Lord, who came with the spirit and power of Elijah in his third manifestation. Which in the Gospel according to Matthew, in chapter... Seventeen, verse 10 and on. He tells us, And his disciple asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. There he is referring to the Elijah in his fourth manifestation before the coming of the Lord that is before the second coming of the Lord. But I say unto you that Elias is come already. See, and his name was John. But it was that God was operating in John the Baptist, the ministry of Elijah, in his third manifestation. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spoke to them of John the Baptist. See? There they understood. That is, they obtained that revelation that the ministry of Elijah in his third manifestation was in John. Perhaps they did not understand that of the ministries at that moment. But notice, God revealed to them there that God was operating the ministry of Elijah in him, in John the Baptist. Notice here on verse 11, on the left he writes, the fourth Elijah, when he referred there to that Elijah who was to come. And on verse 13, he writes, the third Elijah, there to the left. Now notice on page 130. Perhaps they did not understand when it has been said before by the Archangel Gabriel that he that he would be born to Zacharias the priest who would come with the spirit and power of Elijah. We can see that in Luke around there. What we are looking here for 130 of the book of quotations. Paragraph 1162. Let us read that part there. Look, there is something there that is hanging around. Let us see. Look, one. Verse 
13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias. This is the angel Gabriel. For thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Notice, he was the one who named that son who would be born to Zechariah the priest and to Elizabeth. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall not drink neither wine nor strong drink, and he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Always women represents churches. Notice, he was filled with the Holy Spirit, even from Elizabeth's womb. Within the church bride, that promised son, who would be born to her, just as the promised son was born to Mary back then, the fulfillment of the first coming of the Lord, and in his second coming, in the midst of his church, that son would be in her midst and he would be anointed with the Holy Spirit in the midst of his church, in his church. Now, here in this scripture, notice he's brought us to something here. On that 15th verse, he drew a star of David. Let us continue. He says, And many of the children of Israel shall be turned to the Lord their God, and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. See? And there he writes, Elijah, and he drew a star of David as well, to turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That revelation that the Archangel Gabriel gave there to the priest Zechariah, notice, he was already telling him which ministry God would be operating through that child that would be born to him. Now, look on page 130 on the book of quotations. Paragraph 1162, it says, What are we waiting for? When that trumpet, the last one, the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no... Remember, we read it Revelation 11, verse 15 and on, where it tells us of that trumpet, that great voice of the trumpet, which it says that the seventh angel sounds. That is the seventh dispensational angel done broke into eternity in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And there, he leaves the writing, the great trumpet, and time shall be no more. Revelation 10, and also 11, 15 to 19. And to the right, going upwards, he writes, Revelation 11, 15 to 19, and 7, 2 to 17. And again, he writes, the great trumpet. And our brother William continues to say, This seventh trumpet is that seventh trumpet of the Feast of the Trumpets to the Hebrew people. And who sounds or blows the trumpet? It is Moses and Elijah. It is, or they are the ministries of the two olive trees at the last day manifested on earth. The one of Elijah manifested for the fifth time, and the one of Moses manifested for the second time. And that seventh trumpet or last trumpet that sounds pertain to the fulfillment of the Feast of the Trumpets, sounding that last trumpet at this end time to call and gather together the elect of God. First, the elect from among the Gentiles, and then the elect of the Hebrew people. 
on 128, page 128, paragraph 1153, it tells us, or rather 130, page 130, paragraph 1153, it says, the ministry will be Moses and Elijah, changing and calling Israel from the Jewish traditions, listen, from the Jewish traditions that they had been mixed up in, being prophets, they'll believe, they'll believe him, calling them to the feast of the atonement, Christ, letting them recognize Christ, They'll say, He is coming. He'll be here. The Jews will be gathering things like that. And then, when He comes, say, Here I am. In other words, He will reveal Himself like Joseph did back then to His brethren. On top, He writes, Moses and Elijah call Israel from the Jewish tradition to the Feast of the Atonement. Remember that what they're waiting for is for a man. There is a conversation that Brother Brennan had with a rabbi. It is around there in the Book of the Seals. I think it is the sixth seal. See if you can find it where he says that it will be he asked a rabbi and they say that he will be a prophet. Five 24. Let us see. Four twenty-four. It says, and it is in the seventh seal. As I was talking to a Jew up here at Benton Harbor, when that John Wren, being blind all his life, nearly received his sight. They taken me over there, that house of David, and this rabbi come out with a long beard, he said. By what authority did you give John Wren his sight? I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He said, far be it from God having a son. See, and he said, you people can't cut God in three pieces and give him to the Jew. Make three gods out of him. You're a bunch of heathen. I said, I don't cut him in three pieces. I said, Rabbi, would it be a strange thing for you to believe one of your prophets told that something's wrong? He said, our prophets don't tell nothing wrong. I said, who was Isaiah 9, 6 speaking of? He said, the Messiah. I said then, Messiah will be a man prophet, is that right? He said, yes, sir, that's right. There on top, he writes, the Messiah will be a man prophet. I said, show me where Jesus missed it. He said, I said, what relation will Messiah prophet be to God? He said, he will be God. I said, that's right. Now you got it on the head. So help me that Jew standing there and the tears running off his cheek said, I'll hear you some time later. And he writes there, the rabbi crying. I said, Rabbi, you believe that? And he said, look, he said, God is able of these stones to raise children to Abraham. I know he was in the New Testament. I said, right, Rabbi. Now, what about it? He said, if I preached that, I would be down there, you know, where there are places set on the hill there. 
down there in the street begging my bread. I said, I said, I would rather be down there begging my bread. The Jew had still got his hand some money, you know, see, see, I would rather, and his name in gold. I said, I would rather be down there eating salty crackers and drinking branch water and know that I was in the harmony with God and true, that I would be here with my name on a building in gold letters like that and know that I was away from God. I know that he wouldn't listen to me no more, so he went in. Now notice what they're waiting for is a man of this time. And notice on page 85 on this book of quotations. Paragraph 722. It says, This seventh seal book is revealed at the time of the seven thunders of Revelation 10. Let's turn to Revelation 10. And I saw another angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow upon his head. If you notice, that's Christ, see? Because he in the Old Testament was called the angel of the covenant. And he's directly coming to the Jews now, for the church is finished, see? All right. And his face as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. You remember that angel in Revelation 1? Same thing. Angel is a messenger, and he's the messenger to Israel, see? The church has been raptured, see now, or fixing to be raptured. He comes for his church. And above that, he writes, Revelation 10. The mighty angel is the messenger to the Jews. And our brother William continues to say, For the Hebrews, it will be the feast of the trumpets. For the elect among the Gentiles, it will be the opening of the seventh seal in the coming of the seventh seal. The coming of the angel who was very different from the rest, coming in human flesh, manifested at the last day, in the age of the cornerstone and dispensation of the kingdom in his angel messenger. An angel is a prophet. And notice that in that instrument is where that angel comes who was different from the rest. In the message, Broken Cisterns, Brother William says there and tells us, quoting that portion of the book, which that excerpt is in the book of quotations on page 149. Paragraph 1333. The forerunner of the second coming of Christ says, For the trump of God, that last trumpet, the sixth one has just sounded, and the last trumpet, like the last seal, will be the coming of the Lord. He shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, just resting till that time. That's part of this excerpt, where he writes there, the resurrection, And he also writes further down to Israel, the last trumpet, and on top to Israel, the last seal, and he writes to Gentiles, equals the coming. And to the left, he draws Star of David. There on the margin to the left, and under the Star of David, a cornerstone and the ages. Our brother William continues to say, in other words, For this end time, the last trumpet for the Hebrew people is the seventh seal for us. And he shall sound, that is, the last trumpet or great voice of the trumpet shall sound in the up-to-date materialization and fulfillment of the Feast of the Trumpets of Leviticus chapter 23, which precedes the Feast of the Atonement. It is only the same month. Quotations 128, there he tells us On paragraph 1143, it says, Under the seventh trumpet is to Israel the same as the seventh seal was to the church. And there he writes Moses and Elijah. Above the seventh seal he writes Moses and Elijah. 
In other words, that the coming of the Lord, which is the seventh seal to the church, is Moses and Elijah, the seventh trumpet to Israel. We find under the seventh seal that when these souls that was under the altar there that received robes, they were given robes. Not that they earned them because they were in the dispensation when God was still dealing with grace with the Gentiles. And he writes, dispensation of grace, there in between. Not Jews. How perfect then the seventh trumpet and the seventh seal is, perfectly together. The persecution of the Jews. Above there, he writes, the seventh trumpet equals seventh seal. Now, he goes on to say, notice in the previous paragraph in 1142 there he tells us, now let me say this right here, that every trumpet that blowed, blowed under the sixth seal. We'll get to it in a few minutes, where we caught the seal there. All the trumpets sounded under the sixth seal. Because the seventh seal, there was silence. No one knew. That was the minute or hour that Christ would come as He revealed it to us. Because this was when the seventh seal was opened in heaven. Silence was made in heaven for half an hour or about half an hour when the coming of the Lord would be carried out. But every trumpet sounded under the sixth seal under the persecution of the Jews. There above, he writes, seventh seal equals the coming of the Lord. And he also writes, the hour of his coming equals 41.8 years. In other words, it's equivalent to 41 years with eight months. Now he goes on to say, And now notice, the trumpet sounds, and it is the trumpet of the two olive trees. It is the trumpet of the two anointed ones. It is the trumpet of Moses and Elijah. It is the ministry of Moses and Elijah, proclaiming the message of the gospel of the kingdom at this last day, and revealing the mystery of the seventh seal, the mystery of the second coming of Christ as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, as King of kings and Lord of lords in his claiming work. That trumpet, notice, in this book. I believe it's this one. On 416, he has a writing there. Let's see if it's in this book. On the same one here. On page 416, There he writes, sixth seal equals Moses and Elijah coming, equals his ministries. Seventh seal equals the Lord Jesus Christ coming, equals his ministries. Seventh trumpet equals the coming of the Lord. Now notice our brother William continues to say, That last trumpet or great voice of the trumpet, which is the opening and revelation of the seventh seal, revealing the work of the seventh seal at this end time. That is what gathers the elect from among the Gentiles and gathers together the 144,000 elect from the Hebrew people. On page 95, on the book of quotations, paragraph 8, 27, he tells us that's the 144,000 that money scheming bunch and things like that when they see the true genuine thing to get a hold of 
There stands Moses and there stands Elijah. Amen. They'll wrestle with God until 144,000 of the tribes of Israel are called out right there. That's just before the tribulation period, see? Oh, how wonderful. Also, Jacob's trouble. Now, remember, I said he'll call out the 144,000, see? This time now is when the tribulation, when is to do it. That is an excerpt from the Book of the Seals. And at the top he writes, before the tribulation, the 144,000 between the sixth and seventh seal. And they, notice this writing from this notebook. Our brother William left us a writing there. It says, Just as Jacob held unto the angel of the Lord, the heavenly Israel will hold on and the earthly Israel will hold on when they see him in human flesh in the angel of Jesus. That is, Jesus in his angel. In other words, what the church bride has and she is holding on to of that manifestation, the Hebrew people, when they see, they'll say, this is him, and they will hold on as well. Now notice, he continues to say, that mystery of the seventh seal is the mystery that the seven thunders of Revelation 10, which is the voice of Christ speaking as a lion, crying out as when a lion roars and seven thunders uttering their voices and revealing the mystery of the seventh seal, the mystery of the second coming of Christ, of which in 129, on the book of quotations, tells us, paragraph 1149, and these are excerpts from the message, The Feast of the Trumpets. These messages, notice, he preached one on July 19th on Sunday, and the next Sunday he preached Recognizing Your Day and Its Message, which are two very important messages where he speaks to us about all this. Notice, he says, page 129, paragraph 1149, from the seventh angels, messenger of the seventh seal, message in Revelation 10 was the seventh seal, to the seven trumpets between those two times. And on top he writes, the seventh seal equals is Revelation 10. Between those two times, O oh God, how can we say this? to make the people see it. It's between that sixth trumpet and the sixth trumpet, the sixth trumpet and the sixth seal sound at the same time. And between the sixth trumpet and the seventh trumpet, there is a prophet to appear before the Gentiles, to call the people back to their original Pentecostal doctrine. And the two witnesses of Revelation 11 appears to the Jews to send them to Jesus, while the church is being taken up. And he drew a cornerstone. All of them prophets. Amen. The word of the Lord cannot be broken. It won't be a denomination. And he writes Moses and Elijah. And to the left, the star of David. And writing upward, he wrote, it won't be a denomination. Do you see it? Read in your book here and see if that between the sixth and seventh trumpet isn't injected in there. Let the Jews being called out. There he writes Revelation 11. 3 to 7. And he writes 11, 15 to 19. He wrote it to the left. Between the sixth and seventh plague, we come over to that 144,000. You remember that? Which was between that? Do you remember? Between the sixth, the fifth seal and the sixth seal. Between the sixth seal and the seventh seal, there was a calling out of the 144,000. Do you remember that? Now, there is where these trumpets come in right there. And there he writes, the call to the Jews equals, is between the sixth and seventh seal and between the sixth and seventh trumpet. 
See now how all that can be seen so clearly. And notice, he continues to say, in other words, is Jesus Christ himself coming in his theophonic body, coming in spirit, and manifesting himself in human flesh in his angel messenger, and speaking to us through his angel messenger, who would fulfill Christ, crying as when a lion roars, and seven thunders uttering their voices, and revealing to us the mystery of his coming to his church at this last day, coming to his church in the age of the cornerstone and dispensation of the kingdom, coming to his church and bearing and revealing himself in human flesh in his angel messenger. On 157, also tells us, on paragraph 1402, it says, you said, as it was in the days of Sodom, the world would be in that condition just before the destruction of the Gentile world, the Gentile dispensation. Here we are, Sodomites to the core, And then you say that the Son of Man, which is always referred to as a prophet, and he writes, a prophet, God coming, would be revealed in that hour. And on top he writes, Son of Man equals a prophet. Let us turn to 1.13, where also tells us about this manifestation which is the seventh seal and notice on paragraph 989 it says O church rise and shake yourself peach your conscience wake yourself up in this hour we must be desperate or perish There an arrow toward a cornerstone. There is coming forth something from the Lord. I know it as does say the Lord. There is coming forth something, and we better get desperate. It's between life and death. It'll pass through us, and we won't see it. And there on top he writes, something is coming. What is it? And to the left he writes, Revelation 10, 1 to 11, 7, verse 2, and 14, verse 1. And he writes, it is the seventh seal, equals the coming of the Lord. He knew what it was. Because later on, no, notice, he goes on to say, that is the mystery of the coming of the angel of the covenant, of the coming of the mighty angel who comes down from heaven at the last day who cries out as when a lion roars, and seven thunders utter their voices. And what the seven thunders speak is the mystery of the seventh seal. It is the revelation of the seventh seal contained in the voice of Christ as the lion of the tribe of Judah. Speaking as a lion, Christ reveals the mystery of the seventh seal. On page 82, paragraph 696, he tells us, look where the voice was, the thunders, not in heaven, on earth. And there he drew an arrow towards the cornerstone, and below it the ages. The thunders never uttered from the heavens. They uttered from the earth. After it's all done, completed, then These seven thunders, voices, is the only thing that's took to the book that's not revealed. It's not even written in the book. Oh my, I wish I could get that, that the people could actually, don't fail, don't, don't fail. Please don't this time. I'm fixing to leave you. Don't fail. Above that, in that paragraph, he writes, the voices of the thunders were on earth, equals through a prophet. You ever listen, listen. 
These seals are on the backside of the book, and at the time that the seventh angel is sounding, all the mysteries that are written in the book is completed, and immediately the book that was open and written within is closed, and to the left he draws a star of David. The mysteries of God is finished, and this is the mysteries of God, the going of the church, and all these other things. Now, when he begins to sound, the mystery will be finished. Now note, then it is in time for the seventh seal voices of Revelation 10 to be revealed. And to the left he writes, Revelation 1 verse 10 and 4 verse 1. And above he writes, the voices of the seventh seal. And also to the right he writes, the thunders equals the voices of the seventh seal, Isaiah 61, verse 2. And if the thunders is Revelation 10, and it could have not been sounded, and those voices could not have been heard, he was still on the throne of intercession, making intercession there up to for the very last elect. That was going to happen when he would rise from the throne of the Father, take the title deed, open it in heaven to carry out that claiming work. Like yesterday's message, those who want to listen to it, read it carefully and open your heart to the Lord so that He shows you what was spoken yesterday and what is being spoken today. You would understand what God is fulfilling at this time. It would help you very much. Now notice. Our brother William continues to say, and this is how the last trumpet sounds. That is the last trumpet sounding. That seventh trumpet sounding. That trumpet of the feast of the trumpets of the Hebrew people. And for us, the opening of the seventh seal, the opening of the mystery of the second coming of Christ. On page 86, from the book of quotations, paragraph 736, it tells us, the seals was broke. Why? In the last church age, to reveal this truth. Why? The Lamb broke the seals and revealed them to His church in order to collect His subjects for His kingdom, His bride, see? Oh my! He wants to bring His subjects to Him now. What is it? Out of the dust of the earth, out of the bottom of the sea, out of the pits, out of everywhere and every place, out of the regions of darkness, out of paradise, wherever they may be, He'll call and they'll answer. And above that, he writes, he calls his subjects with the revelation. And to the right, he draws a cornerstone and the ages. He goes on to say, the forerunner of the second coming of Christ said on page 148 in the book of the seals, seven thunders of revelation, may he show the bride how to prepare for the great translation faith. And Brother William says, That is the rapturing faith. Why? Now notice on page 34, on the book of quotations, paragraph 289, it tells us, I know one thing, as long as I hold on to that first ministry, the second won't come, it didn't come. Now, as long as I hold on to the second, the third won't come, see? I've got to step right out, step out and believe it. God said so. And he writes, third pull equals to speak. For it to come to that, let go of what came before. And he wrote on top, discernment. And our brother William keeps saying, Because that rapturing faith is where? In the thunders. Because the thunders are the ones that contain the revelation of the seventh seal, the revelation of the second coming of Christ. 
and the thunders are the voice of Christ speaking to his church as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, as King of kings and Lord of lords in his claiming work, speaking to his church in the age of the cornerstone and dispensation of the kingdom at the last day, on the Lord's day, on page four, on this book of quotations. Let us see here, paragraph 28, it says, I truly believe before the church can have the rapture, it's got to have rapturing faith. We can't even have faith for divine healing, let alone rapturing faith. Got to have a faith that will change and quicken this body and be taken away. I believe there is a church on its road tonight, a power of the divine God, that men will speak the word here and there, and he'll flash like lightning. And to the right, going upward, he writes like lightning. And the church is coming out, not a psychologist, not some of this put on make-believe, but a real, through genuine, anointed Holy Ghost called out church. And he writes there above, he will speak the rapturing faith. And he drew a cornerstone. On 38, let us see there as well. He shows us on paragraph 316, also tells us. Now, a little later on, If I get a chance, I want to tell you what happened just recently, bringing in a new ministry of just speak the word and puts it right back into the lap of the people again. If they will come with the right attitude and believe, it's just got to happen. And there above he writes, the new ministry equals speak the word. There above the paragraph 316. And to the left, halfway down the paragraph, he draws Star of David. Our brother William continues to say, Christ has always used human beings to speak to his people. Just like on the Old Testament, God used human beings, prophets, to whom the word of God came. That is on page 80. He tells us about this as well. On paragraph 682, there he tells us, God doesn't deal with groups of men. God deals with an individual because man has different ideas. He's built up different in nature. God has to take that man and mess him around and pull him around out of his own self till he gets him in his nature. And then God deals with that person. In the excerpt, where he speaks that God gave him his gift, give him his nature, give him his style, his way. He gives him some certain characteristics. Look, Brother William told us about Jonah, who had a strong temper. It cost him an uncomfortable trip. He had a strong personality. And others, they had different personalities. Notice, because God is the one that molds those prophets according to how he wants them to be. Some don't like it. But that's the divine program. And they are ordained for that time, for that age or that dispensation, in the way God sends them, whether the people like it or not. God sends them. Now, there is a group in each age and in each dispensation that receives them. And perhaps some of them don't like the way, but 
since they look behind the veil, then they do like that because the elect of God in each age and in each dispensation is after the blessings of God and how God fulfills them. Since they are looking at the blessings and the promises for that time, he grabs hold of them and receives them and does not stumble with the veil of flesh. Now, notice that is on 1399, on page 156, so that you can write it down there. Paragraph 1399 on page 156. For that certain age, God's predestinated that certain thing to happen, and there is not another thing that can take its place. Care what it is, how many man made achievements. Nothing can take its place. He predestinated the man, maybe an ignorant man. He might have predestinated him another kind of man. Whatever he is, he gives him his class, his gift, give him his nature, his style, and whatever it is, how he expresses himself. Perhaps he doesn't know how to speak right, but even that, even how he expresses himself, and whatever he does, he makes the man of the hour to catch the people of the hour, right? He does it. Notice, and on top, he writes, his prophet equals comes with the equipment for the age or, that is, or dispensation. Now, our brother William continues to say here, and for the last day, we find that Christ said in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, come up hither, and I will show thee things which shall be hereafter. Where we will go up to? To the age of the cornerstone. On page 305. On the book of the seals. The Reverend William Branham tells us which was one of the places that yesterday we read. And notice in this book, there he also writes to us, halfway through the paragraph he says, and look how perfectly Isaac had left the home and was out in the field away from his home when Rebecca saw him. And the church meets Christ in the air and then he takes her back, and he writes, the other body. He wrote down on top of it, on this book. He takes her back into the home, father's home, where the mansions are prepared. Isaac took Rebecca the same way. And he writes, yesterday, slash the promised son today. And he drew a cornerstone in the ages. And notice, it was love at first sight. Oh my. She just ran to meet him. And that's the way the church will meet Christ in the air. And in this one he writes, the age of the cornerstone. There is where the church bride sees him and forever be with him. On 430, he tells us there, The Reverend William Branham. And let us have on this one here as well. It says, God will close the door one day. He did it in the day of Noah. And they beat on the door. Is that right? There, on this one here, he writes, The Seventh Watch. Remember, the Bible said that in the Seventh Watch. Here he draws a cornerstone in the ages. And he writes, Seventh Watch. That's right. 
Some fell asleep in the first watch, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. But in the seventh watch, there come forth a proclamation, a cry. The bridegroom cometh. And there on that entire sentence above it, he writes. From where he says proclamation, above that he writes. The forerunner crying out, forerunning the second coming of Christ, the bridegroom. The forerunner crying out, forerunning the second coming of Christ, the bridegroom. And to the right he draws a cornerstone and the ages, and an arrow towards the cornerstone, and he writes eight inside, and writes Revelation 4, 1 and the seventh in the seventh age. The bridegroom cometh, go out to meet him. The sleeping virgins said, Say, I'd like to have some of that oil now. The bride said, I just got enough for myself, just got enough. If you want it, you go pray it up. Don't you see the sleeping virgin now? Look at the Episcopalians, Presbyterian Lutherans, and everything trying to. And the trouble of it is, instead of trying to get the Holy Ghost, and at the top he writes, Incarnate, they're trying to speak in tongues. And a lot of them speak in tongues, and it's a shame to come to this church to be prayed for, wants me to come to their house and pray for them. You call that the Holy Ghost? That's speaking in tongues, but not the Holy Ghost, see? Now, I believe the Holy Ghost speaks in tongues. You know, I believe that, see? But there is a counterfeit to it, too. Yes, sir. The fruits of the Spirit, what proves what it is. In the ages, he said that the evidence of having the Holy Spirit is that the person receives the messenger and the message of his time. Before, he used to say, that it was the gifts to speak in tongues and all that. But the Holy Spirit corrected him. And he mentioned it. Now notice, he says, Now notice then, when she come that last hour, and there, when they come in, then they went and said, Well, I believe I've got it now. I believe I got it. Yeah, we're getting it. I better not say this, see, because it might cause a confusion. When I said the other day, the rapture, how it would come, now if you say you'll take it, all right. That is up to you. And there to the left, he draws a star of David, and he writes, that of the seventh seal. And he's going to say something there, he says. When the sleeping virgin, see, that they thought she was prayed up to come back, the bride was done gone. It went, and she didn't know it, like a thief in the night. Then they begin to bang on the door. And what happened? What taken place? They were cast into the tribulation period. The Bible said, there will be the weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Is that right? When is it going to be? Brother, sister, I don't know. But I, me, it might be just me here now, see? This, this is my thoughts. I believe it's so close each day. I'm just trying to walk as softly as I can, see? And now when, you know, when the something happened today and I seen something come up, I couldn't get my breath anymore, see? That whole part there, he highlights it and circles something. He circles he. And he writes, Moses. There he was, standing there, that little light standing right there. And here it was. I know it's the truth. 
And on top he writes, the second coming of the Lord. And at the bottom, what the prophet saw. And to the right, he writes, Elijah and Moses. Now, what we read a few minutes ago, which was on page 113 on the Book of Quotations, paragraph 989, that message, that he titled it, Desperation, which goes along with The token token was first, but they were preached on the same day. And that was on September 1st. And there he says that something was coming forth. And he said that he knew what it was. There is coming forth something from the Lord. He says, I know it. Why? Because months before that, he preached the seals. And this that we are speaking, reading here, which the church bride should get into that desperation to receive what he saw. And he says that if they weren't careful, they would overlook it. But he saw it. He knew what it was. He had seen it in the preaching of the seals. There he was standing there, that little light standing right there. And here it was. And I know it's the truth. I thought, oh God, I couldn't say that. I can't say that. But I can't. I just walked out of the room, went out, woke up and down. Brother, I thought, my, what can I do? Oh, see, I have to go fishing or something. Boy, I can't, I can't tell you. See, there he writes. As a question, he wrote, what couldn't he say? Now notice in the book of quotations where we read that portion of the message, Desperation, where he writes, something is coming forth. What is it? And he answers, he himself writes, it is the seventh seal, the coming of the Lord. There, he completely turns it around and says, so we have good time, don't we? Praise the Lord. Amen. See, we're in a tremendous time. See, for my heart is overflowed with happiness and joy. But when I think of this world and the thousands that I know that's lost, back shadowed, mm -hmm, then your heart just bleeds. Now, Notice if this, if the Reverend William Branham felt this in the spirit and power of Elijah in its fourth manifestation, and he was still a bit far away in distance, and how would that ministry in its fifth manifestation feel or be feeling at this end time? aware that there is just put a little time left and that if the person doesn't get desperate, they will stay in the Great Tribulation and that he has been saying this for many times. And that is the desperation of Elijah there. And it is the desperation of one of the two olive trees at the same time, that ministry is speaking to the people. Then they will ask, but wasn't there supposed to be a rapture? I believe the message. I believe everything that was spoken. Notice, but the fulfillment of that word, when it was quickened and 
was being taken to fulfillment in the midst of the church bride, you did not believe it, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. In other words, the visitation of the Lord in the midst of His church. That happened 2,000 years ago, when He said it, weeping back then, which also happened to David when he was looking toward Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem! Where is that? Around Matthew. And in look, but in Matthew here, tells us on verse 23. It should be around 19 in look. Nineteen. There, you have more details. That which was shown also in King David, who was also showing the sufferings of Christ. Luke chapter 19, verse 41 says, And when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. And that same thing happened with King David, saying, If thou hast known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the thing which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee around, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee. And they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. And notice, he writes there, Jerusalem, dash, and he writes, the foolish. And in chapter 23, verse 37 to 39, there he writes to us, next to that scripture, on verse 39, where it says, For I say unto you, Ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. And he writes, In the second coming of the Lord. Now, he goes on to say here in the book of the seals, page 432, He finishes that paragraph there. Then your heart just bleeds. What can you do? What can you do? You just feel the Holy Spirit crying out in your heart, like it must have been in our Lord when He looked over Jerusalem. His own people, see, said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft would I have hoovered you as a hen with her brood, but you would not. You just feel the Holy Spirit say, How often I would have gathered you, see, but you would not. See, we're, we're right here at something, friends. And here he writes, Moses. And where it says, Whatever it is, that is, he goes on to say whatever it is, and he writes the seventh seal. Whatever it is, God knows. Nobody, nobody knows when it's going to happen. That's a secret. 
Nobody knows when it's going to happen. But Jesus told us, when you see these things, all these things, just like what I went, comparing with the sixth seal, to what he said in Matthew 24. Now, remember what he said. When you see these things come, to begin to come to pass, then the time is at the door. Watch the very next, the 30, the 30 and 31st verse as went on down, 32nd, 33rd verses. He said, And he shall send forth his angels to the four corners of the heaven, to the four winds, to gather his elect. Now notice the tenth vision took place years ago when he was preaching this message of the sixth seal or the series of the seals. And he could not speak openly of what he saw in the little room because he said that a human being on this earth will never know it. And it is the same thing that in the sixth seal he says, I can't tell you. He could not open that mystery of the seventh seal because the seventh seal would be open in his coming. Now, let us continue on page 432. He says, is that right? Now, remember, he stopped right there. He never went ahead after that sixth seal. He never said anything about the seventh. He said the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, but he stopped there, never mentioned about anything about it. See, then he starts on parable. And at the top he writes, sixth seal equals the end of the world. Here on this one he writes, he spoke everything about the seventh seal in parables. He said, these things will be. He's answering them three questions. What will be these signs? And what will be the sign of your coming? What will be the sign of the end of the world? And the sixth one, there was the end of the world. And the sounding of the seventh angel raised up the hands and swore by him that lives forever and ever that time shall be no more to the left eternal star of David. The earth is given birth to a new one. It's over. And there is where he says, and here we are, right here at the door. Oh, I tremble. And what must I do, Lord? What else can I do? See? And then just thinking of seeing that place. And he writes, sixth dimension. And those precious people. I stood there looking at myself. And I thought, oh God, why they can't miss this? I, I, I ought to push them. I ought to just reach down to the audience and got them and push. You can't do that. Notice the most that a prophet can do is to speak the word and exhort the people. But then it is up to the individual, to the person. Of course, there is a predestination there and a free will. Now notice. On page 97, on the book, the excerpt, it is from the book of the seals, on paragraph 838, he says, which is an excerpt, From the book of the seals, he says, And all of you are conscious and know that there is something mysterious happening, and it is happening, and I, I know what it is. Now, I am just saying that it's the grace of God that lets me know what it is. It's something that's tremendous, and it's gone right now, and there's not a way in the world for you to see it. But so help me with this Bible in my hand, I know what it is. He knew, see? It's been told you before. So just don't try to put any interpretation, but just believe me as your brother. See, we're living in a great hour. See, every time you've tried to do it, you've done that. Just So just don't. Don't, don't try to make no interpretation. 
message, and especially tonight, when that seal becomes up in front of you. Notice that the great revelation that he gave there, and on top there he writes, the second coming of the Lord equals the seventh seal. When that seal becomes up in front of you, he saw him there in that office, in the little room. He says he was standing there. And he also saw him in the little room. And he writes in the message, the angel and the commission, he writes on that when he's speaking about the tent vision, He writes, it is the mystery of the Lord in his second coming. In other words, what the church would have at that time to where he was transported to. When that seal becomes up in front of you, see, just don't try to interpret it. If you can understand it, this is that third pool. And below that he writes, the seventh seal is the third pool. And at the top he writes, there is no way to see it, the seventh seal, but it will come up in front of you. Now, our brother William keeps on saying, just like the first coming of Christ was fulfilled in the midst of the Hebrew people, the first coming of the angel of the covenant in human flesh in all of his fullness manifested in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. The coming of the angel of the covenant. The coming of the angel of the Lord, the angel of Jehovah of the Old Testament, which was made flesh in the person of Jesus. He has promised for the last day to be manifested again in human flesh, coming on a snow-white horse, which is the word coming incarnate in a man of this end time, in the age of the cornerstone and dispensation of the kingdom, which is the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is for the West, for Latin America and the Caribbean. And notice in this writing that he left us in this notebook. He tells us, in the tenth vision, looking from the West to the East, on the right hand was the little room where the pillar of fire was ministering through a man. Can I say this any more clearly? Now, to some, that tells them nothing. To others, it's about rejoicing that they are seeing the fulfillment of what Brother Branham spoke, that that seventh seal will be before them, right standing before them, speaking to them, bringing them the rapturing faith, the transformation faith. Now, he said, how will it be? How will it come? When will it come? And he says, it is not open, and that's a good thing. Why? Because the enemy would have done a whole lot of harm. But notice that this mystery of the seventh seal has been opening more and more and more at this last day, which is what will produce that squeeze, that persecution, which will then become more terrible for the foolish and the 144,000, all because of the seventh seal. If that would have been opened before, then the squeeze would have been closer or would have been taken place and it would have been more difficult to carry out the works that has been carried out so far and the works that is still left. Notice, he always said that he would try to for the squeeze not to be fulfilled beforehand, or that the squeeze would not start beforehand. But notice that by it being fulfilled or 
would begin with the opening of the seventh seal when it was being made known to the church. Well, in his time, it would not happen because he was not the person that would be bringing the revelation of the seventh seal to the church. As simple as that. Now notice, he goes on to say, and this is how the seventh seal is open in terms of its fulfillment. And it is open in terms of the revelation of the seventh seal being made known to the sons and daughters of God at this end time in order to receive the faith, the revelation of the rapture. The rapturing faith, which is the revelation of the second coming of Christ as the Lion of the tribe of Judah, as King of kings and Lord of lords in his claiming work. Page 155, the book of quotations. Paragraph. He tells us, Now in doing this, I have come here for the purpose of teaching the last vials, last seven vials, and the last seven trumpets, and the last seven thunders of the book of Revelation. Time them together in this hour that we are now living to follow the opening of the seven seals, the seven church ages. There above, he writes, a tent. So we wouldn't get room to do it. So I hope that soon as I can, can get a place sufficient for that either here in Louisville, New Albany, or either put up a tent so we can just stay as long as the Lord lead us to do. And he writes 2002, and he writes tent. And on top he writes, the teaching in the tent equals the thunders. And there also writes the seven trumpets. And to the left, on the three lines slanted, he writes, the seven trumpets, seven vials, the seven thunders. And on 154, also tells us, on paragraph 1376, it says, The first pool healing, second pool prophesying, third pool the opening of the word, the mysteries revealed. And to the left he writes, Prophet, no more, there is no more higher order to reveal the word than prophets. But the only way the prophet can be vindicated is by the word. And remember, the third pool was the opening of them seven seals to reveal the hidden truth that's been sealed in the word. And on top he writes, third pool equals the seals. Third pool equals to open the word equals through prophet. Today's study goes together with yesterday's. And notice there you have a clear picture of all of this that we have been speaking about. And today you're under this subject, the mystery of the seventh seal and the seventh trumpet. Now remember that all of this is for those who will be transformed. In today's message, there is a part where he says, notice here on page 20 or 21, he says, the elect will know him. The world will not understand, but the elect will indeed understand, because the wise will understand. It will be a mystery that will be revealed to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, because the others will not be granted to know this mystery, because this is the mystery that gives them the faith, the revelation to be transformed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And those who will have need to know that mystery will be the ones who will be transformed. The others will try to criticize the entire fulfillment of that mystery, but the elect will understand, believe, and be transformed at the last day. And here we have a group that have believed and received that fulfillment. In other words, they are receiving that rapturing faith, and in the other countries who are connected on this occasion. That is why yesterday, in that writing he left us, 
where he used the time of Moses as an example where he smote the rock for the second time. That is on that little piece of paper. Notice where he he wrote to us the rock to speak to so that it gives forth its water to the people. But Moses, filled with anger, smites it and loses the blessing of entering the promised land for breaking the type and figure of the second coming of Christ. And there in between, he writes, and whoever smites the second coming of Christ with smiting words will not enter the transformation and rapture. In other words, that's the writing that we read yesterday. Because notice, here where we, he told us on today's message that those who will not be transformed and raptured are going to be the critics. They rather going to be criticizing. So notice how God goes on giving us that knowledge of who is going to be transformed and who will not. Look for those that are criticizing, mocking and all that, and speaking ill of the fulfillment of the second coming of the Lord. They will not be transformed. As simple as that. But that promise of the transformation and rapture is for us, the elect, and to be there soon at the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's been a great privilege for me and a great blessing to be able to share with you on this occasion in this Bible study the mystery of the seventh seal and the seventh trumpet, which we will hear in this message that Dr. William Soto Santiago titled this way. And there we will be seeing everything related to this subject and portions that perhaps we did not read now, he will read them there in that message. Let us stand and with a song we'll start preparing ourselves to receive the message that we have for today. And we will thank God for allowing us to see at this time what the Reverend William Branham saw, what he could not say at that time. We can see it We can hear it today, and we can receive everything He is giving us. A song. Let us look in our hymn book, The Seventh Seal, number 41. In his first coming, the earth was impacted. In his second coming, he will shake it as well. Like in the coming of John and the birth of Jesus, it would be so simple that they wouldn't know that they would overlook it. It is the seventh seal. It is a pillar of fire. It is the Son of Man in the midst of His people. 
It is the seventh seal. It is the pillar of fire. It is the Son of Man in the midst of his people. It is the cornerstone coming in power. It is the vision that was given to the prophet Daniel. The stages of the seventh seal are stages that show s us the program of God being revealed to the church. It is the seventh seal. It's the pillar of fire. It is the Son of Man in the midst of his people. It is the seventh seal. It is the pillar of fire. It is the Son of Man in the midst of his people. It would have a beginning and it would have an end. The seventh seal at this end time. It will be the end of the vials and also of the trumpets. It will be the end of the systems and the ushering in. Of the millennium. It is the seventh seal. It is the pillar of fire. It is the Son of Man in the midst of his people. It is the seventh seal. It is the pillar of fire. It is the Son of Man in the midst of his people. It is the Son of Man in the midst of his people. It is the Son of Man in the midst of his people. The mystery of the seventh seal and the seventh trumpet. With us, our dear brother and friend, Dr. William Soto Santiago.